Triggered Wrestling is so awesome all the way around. That gets me triggered. Ooh, okay, well, let's go with the bad trigger right now. See, I'm a, I'm a fan of all of it. We'll force you to watch Trigger Wrestling. What's up, everybody? We are Triggered Wrestling. We're giving away shit today. We had an amazing Sunday at Collectible Stampede. Thank you very much to Taqueria Guadalajara for having us out there. Collectible Stampede, West Coast. I am here with my tag team partner, Adrian Los Santos. Adrian, how you doing? Doing absolutely great, bro. This is one of the best Collectible Stampede we've ever attended. Mind you, we've only attended twice, but we got to hang out with none other than the legend himself, formerly known as Drago. But it is now known as El Dios del Inframundo. Got to learn a lot from the business and from him. So, how, how'd you like about that, Brian? Um, before we get into that, I want to introduce somebody that has uh, been a big part of Triggered Wrestling. So, we're going to call this the thank you episode because we've been doing this for about six months now. But uh, I want to introduce everybody to the person behind Triggered Wrestling that does all the cool little edits and the beep poops and the blops. It's Caitlin. Caitlin, say hello. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. It's an honor to finally be on the show that I've uh, been working on. Yeah, don't say yourself too short to let the people know that you are the executive producer of Triggered Wrestling Podcast. Um, I don't know about executive producer. I don't think we have anything <laughs> like that yet. But yeah, I do a lot of the uh, editing. I've been helping everybody learn, you know, how to use new software. Um, and it's been quite a journey. It's awesome to see how much we've all grown out of this. I'm excited for us. She's also a bomb ass photographer. Don't let her sell herself short to y'all. She's the one that takes all those awesome pictures on our Instagram. Let's just say we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her for all the software that she showed us, all the uh, sleepless nights that she had, putting episodes together, doing she's doing a little bit of everything, not just one thing. She's all around. Um, she's amazing. Aww. That's right. Triggered Wrestling, brought to you by women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm not going to lie. But uh, you know what I'm going to say? So th- obviously we're recording this episode very quickly to announce the giveaway winner of the Triggered Wrestling Summer Signing Giveaway, sponsored by Barrio Toys. So we're going to get there a little bit further down the road. I know there's been a lot of people asking us, like, you guys been around for relatively soon and everybody's always surprised that like we've been doing this for essentially since march is like when we kind of really got into it i think we technically started recording like february but youtube started up in march so we've been doing this for four months and every time we tell people they're always like super shocked so adrian would you want to tell the story of how triggered wrestling came to be i'll let the uh senior producer speak on it because again we would not be here if it was not for her Damn. All right. Well, continue on then, Caitlin. Go ahead. Use your best narrator voice to narrate the career of Trigger Wrestling. <laughs> you know, I kept hearing you guys just talk, you know, amongst each other as friends. You guys have been friends for a long time. I've hung out with y'all a lot. But for a while there, for months, you guys kept talking about wrestling just nonstop through the phone. You guys would text each other every day, every night. And every time you would see each other, uh, that's all you guys would talk about is wrestling. And you guys wanted to, you know, maybe make something out of it. And I kept hearing y'all talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And I finally got tired of it and just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm I'm going to help you make it because I know how to record and you guys already have the content. So why not? Why not make something cool out of it? We recorded like a couple episodes that were complete shit. And uh, <laughs> luckily, the world will probably never hear those and uh so we recorded like a couple pilot episodes just trying to figure things out and uh yeah here we are now today episode i don't know 47 48 47 47 episodes later here we are and we're finally doing a about us adrian yeah, something that I've been wanting to do from the very beginning because nobody knows who we are, uh, really. Nobody knows what type of wrestling we like. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's little things about us that, you know, not only do we love wrestling, we also hate some of the wrestling. So, yes, although, yes, we are fans of wrestling, we don't really like all of it. Uh, some of us like stories, some of us like wrestling better, some of us like a little bit of both. And that's great, but, um, but yeah, you know, here to talk about ourselves, uh, how we came up. Like how Brown was saying, yeah, there were some dark episodes out there. Speaking of kakabuking. 
Those were really caca booking episodes. <laughs> so um glad we uh, improved our content because at first it was a joke. We treated it like as a, as a friendly thing. But now after a while, I would say maybe a month and a half, maybe two months where we started taking it very seriously. And you know what? People like our content. We can make something out of this and hopefully we can all grow, you know? Definitely. I mean, I know for me, one of the turning points was like when we attended SPW, Supreme Pro Wrestling Local here in Sacramento. Uh, and we were just waiting in line. And people were like, oh, Trigger Wrestling's here. And I'm like, Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. And it was your first event at Supreme Pro Wrestling. And people already knew who you were because you were associated with me. And I, I know I'm a big fan of Supreme Pro Wrestling. And I know I see uh, most of the usual faces out there. But yeah, you know, that's what it is. Building up our stock, um, getting our name out there and just going out there to the show, to the meet and greets, to all these events. You know, put our name out there. The hustle never sleeps. The grind never stops. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Man, I remember, I want to say I, I remember, but it was like yesterday, you know what I mean? It was two days ago when, you know, we were driving with Dios del Inframundo in the back seat, uh, Drago, formerly known as Drago, Lucha Underground. You know, he was asking us, oh, I know you guys are doing a podcast, YouTube channel. How long have you guys been doing it for? And I was like, oh, like four months. And he was like, four months. He was like super shocked that, you know, we had the support of many great people. Demo from Barrio Toys, shout out for doing the sponsorship deal here with us for this giveaway. Uh, Steven West Ghost, Noel, Takri Guadalajara, Collectible Stampede, Roy, Roy Lucier. He put us in touch with Oscar King Studios, all these great names that are behind us helping us do these things. So thank you so much. Caitlin, anything you want to say? Uh, this could be a nice segue into Collectible Stampede because I also want to give a quick shout out to Chris for letting me go on the other side of the barricade to take photos. That shit was so fun. I don't know if you listen or not, Chris, but the next time I see you, I owe you a beverage or a lunch or whatever you want. It's your choice. All right, so let's get into this Collectible Stampede. We had an amazing show brought to us by Collectible Stampede in the well from Taqueria, Guadalajara at 6 West Court Street in Woodland, California. We had Aaron Solo was there. Check out on our social medias, him giving us a shout out as well as Barrio Toys. Um, yeah, we had uh, Hellraiser Blaze become the new of the dead champion. Guapo Lupe ended up beating Drago and Jekylls. Bobby Callahan defended the collectible stampede belt. A lot of things happened and most importantly, a lot of kids had fun. Hey, bro, my nemesis, Joey Gonzo, retained his belt, bro, his West Coast design belt against a Chupi. Man, I was kind of pissed. I was talking that trash. I tried to throw him off his game here and there. So, and Montoya, too, man. Them, them two guys, they grab my gears. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all love. I'm just a little pissed off that uh he retained his gold. I kind of wanted to see Chupi become the new West Coast design champion. But, you know, your wishes can't always come true. So, Joey, my hat's off to you, my man. You won. You were the better man that day. Hopefully, you can still continue to carry that prestigious West Coast design belt. Jesus. <laughs> Joey Gonzo. He's a great wrestler. And uh, catch him out in the Bay Area is usually where he's at. Him and, he, well, technically his name is Jaguar Montoya, currently out of action, but they're great wrestlers, great people. Check them out. Uh, Brian, what about Dreamy Drew? I was about to get to Dreamy hey. Drew, bro. I talked to Dreamy Drew. Pretty much my daughter's first ever dose of like live wrestling was Supreme Pro Wrestling Collectible Stampede in April. And Dreamy Drew was her first match that she saw. So it like resonated a lot with her. So every time she sees him, she's like, oh, I got to take a picture with Dreamy Drew. That's the God's gift to women guy, you know? So yeah, just a big thing memory you know like i just know that that's gonna probably stick with me for like the rest of my life like that's the guy that got my daughter into wrestling for putting up a good show you know so shout out to dreamy drew yeah shout out to dreamy drew because the man has the power the wrestling skills and most importantly man he has ladies passing out on the third row left and right man the grandmas were all like oh dreamy <laughs> and i'm like man this guy got it all man <laughs> man it was a good time at collectible stampede so if you were unable to go definitely go to the event october 8th that one will be a free event we'll be there again we'll see what shenanigans they are able to bring up that day can't forget october 6th at the barrio toys in roseville california 100 atkinson street McFoley will be there as well don't forget to get your tickets on eventbrite also september 9th catch psychosis live doing a meet and greet also at Barrio Toys, 100 Atkinson Street in Roseville, California. They do big things out there. We're doing big things in Northern California. I know everybody thinks that it's the Bay, LA, and then you go all the way up to Seattle. But there's a lot of important people here. There's a lot of things going on in Northern California. Which brings us to the grand winner of our giveaway. Drum rolls, please. 
the winner of our summer signing giveaway sponsored by Barrio Toys. Caitlin, do the honors. All right. So the winner of our giveaway is going to be burnt underscore weenie underscore sandwich. That's Andre Medina. Andrew Medina, if you're listening to this, you heckin' won our summer giveaway. You heckin' won. All right. All right. So, Burnt Weenie Sandwich, we'll be hitting you up shortly so I get that Addy information and we'll mail it out to you as soon as possible. Caitlin, you're so quiet. This is your first time on our show. You got to bring that triggered energy. I know. I'm really awful at this. This is why I'm behind the scenes. But uh, let me just specifically state what Burnt Weenie Sandwich won. He won an autograph <laughs> print from Of The Dead Designs and it's signed by Chavo Guerrero Jr. He also received received a signed Conan Luchacito. So that's two great things on our prize pack here. So I'm excited and I'm jealous. And I met Chalo Girl and I'm still jealous. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so that's our giveaway winner here but before we go before we do anything else i want to put caitlin on the spot because this is the first time that she's on her show she's got to do a top five blind ranking women's current wrestlers oh my god i'm so nervous you know what let's even make it even more random for you i'm gonna name one adrian's gonna name one and you're just gonna do the best you can okay okay sounds good and it's the same rules that you guys have been doing right like if if i rank it i can't move it right exactly Oh my god, that's so tough. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start off with someone that I know you like to just see where you would put her on the ranking. So I'm going st- to start with Masha Slamovich. Oh my god. Um, For Masha Slamovich, that's my girl. Um, You know, I'm going to put her at number three. I think that she's doing fantastic in her career right now and she's still got way more miles to go and I'm super excited to see her reach her very full potential. I mean, I already saw her uh, beat the shit out of Nick Gage, but man, I really want to see her continue. It can be any company here, Adrian. Whatever you want to ask. Ask, ask it. All right. Since we're going in that route, I'm going to go ahead and say Trish Stratus. I hate it. I hate you. No shade towards her. I mean, like she's been around for a long time, but I'm not liking where she's going right now. So I'm sorry, Trish. You're going to go to number five, girl. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> number five, Trish Stratus for a WWE Hall of Famer. I'm going to go with a future WWE Hall of Famer here. And I'm going to go with Charlotte Flair. You can't ask me that with her husband in front of me. Adrian, I'm talking to you, right? You're you're married to her? (laughs) (laughs) This is a deep, deep, deep inside joke here. (laughs) (laughs) Um Charlotte I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with two because you're right. She is a future Hall of Famer. I mean, she's Ric Flair's daughter. That woman is built like her dad. She's all limbs. Am I a huge fan of her? Nah. Not because she's married to my husband, but because she, I don't know, I think it's the personality, you know? It's not It's not my scene, but she does act like a queen. I gotta hand it to her. I don't know. You know, that's a good reason there. Adrian, you're, you're next up. All right, I'm going to go jump to another company. We already did an Impact, GCW, WWE. Let me go over to AEW. And none other than Holy Sheeta. What would you rank her as? Oh, man. I'm going to put her at... Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. There's two more slots left, right? I don't want to put her at four. I want to change it now. I'm mad because I have a feeling I know who <laughs> you're going to try and have me put as number one. And you know I will. You know I will. But I guess for this list, just in case, I got to save the number one. I'm going to put Sheeta at four. But I don't believe in this list anymore. I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's really funny is that I purposely in my head was going to just leave Rhea Ripley completely out of this because I know you probably would have put her as number one. <laughs> you know, honestly, I I kind of wouldn't, though. I do have a different lady on my mind that I would put as number one. And I'm a little disappointed in you, Brian, because you know who my girl is. Like, Deep down, you know who she is, and I can't believe you're not going to put her on this list. You're going to really give me the last one is Rhea Ripley? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you choose your own number it's gonna one. be becky lynch that? it's the man every day every <laughs> freaking day it's the man becky lynch has been amazing since i had first seen her since i think she came out of nxt um all in her steampunk garb and everything i thought she was fantastic and when i watched her become the man and get her nose busted that was it for me becky lynch is my number one man all the time i'm sorry babe <laughs> 
<laughs> Becky Lynch will always be my man. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh man. Well, I mean, so going back to your list now, 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 now you know the five that we asked. I put them in the order. I mean, obviously Becky Lynch is number one, but how would you order them now? I would definitely rank it as Becky Lynch is number one. Hikaru Shida is definitely number two. Um, when I first started watching AEW when it aired on TV, I fell in love with her. She came out beating everybody up with kendo sticks, and I thought that was amazing. I love her. She's also just really good as a wrestler, and I really love her coming to AEW. And I'm really sad that her championship was done during the pandemic, and I feel like she deserves another run. Uh, my number three would be Masha is still definitely going to be number three. And then number four would be Charlotte, 100%. I'm going to swap her out from number two. Um, So basically just swapping Sheeta and Charlotte. That's how I would change my list. Um, And again, no shade towards Charlotte. She's a legend in the making, but not my thing. I definitely prefer uh, some of the newer wrestling, newer style wrestling. Well, not newer style wrestling. I don't know what to call it. I I guess a new breed of wrestling. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that's how I would rank them. And we're assuming Triz is still number five, right? I mean, I'd gladly knock her off my list (laughs) if I could, but you know, that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Man, well, that was a good top five. I like doing that with you, Caitlin. That was pretty dope. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Well, before we go, since you guys put me on the spot, I feel like it's only best that I put y'all on the spot right now. Oh, man. So, without a further ado, let's go with our top three. Top three, guys. Top three tag teams. Man. Are we doing current or all time? Oh, you know what? Let's make it hard. Let's go all time. Brian, you go first. Oh, tag teams? My favorite tag team? Of all time. Oh, man. Top three of all time. And you know what's so funny is that the people that I think are like the top three tag teams aren't even the most memorable to me, like into what I grew up as. It's really weird. Like if I had to go with my top three favorite tag teams of all time, number one's got to be Edge and Christian, just because how hilarious they were. They won a lot of titles together. I just like them as a team. Um, Number two, shit. I'm gonna go with the Usos. I really like the Usos run. Uh, They've been a tag team their entire career. Uh, I really wanted to see them go one-on-one against each other. And I know in an interview they said that that's one of their goals is to have a a brother-on-brother match. Do you think if they have that type of match, it'll be like a retirement match for the both of them? No, I don't think it would be a retirement match. But wouldn't it be cool? No, I wouldn't. uh, I want to see that when they're in their prime. Well, hold on. What you mean in their prime? Bro, Edge is in his prime right now. Bro, what's his name? uh, (laughs) Oldberg was in his prime in what? In 2015. Sting was in his prime in what? When he was in WWE. What you mean? All these old heads going back to WWE. They're in their prime, bro. Stop. Um, (laughs) Let me see. And my number number three favorite tag team of all time. Man, this is so difficult. I'm going to go with... And just because I have to say somebody... I'm gonna go with the and this and see this is uh, I fucking WWF Hardy Boys was dope. The Hardy Boys now is not dope, and that's what I'm gonna say. But if I was living in the nostalgia land, Hardy Boys. But um, before I get into Adrian's list, those are my favorite of all times. But they're not the most memorable tag teams to me. Like when I think of a tag team, and you guys might not even know who I'm talking about. And if you're listening to this and you do know, like comment subscribe to us triggered wrestling and on tiktok twitter we are what are we trig underscore wrestling but uh do you guys even know the beverly brothers who exactly bro so they're like some random ass tag team in like the 90s in fact one of them is the dad of caveman on monday night raw i forget the dude's name von wagner who but they just wore like these purple outfits with some stars, bro. And I don't know, like I just thought that their outfit was like a perfect tag team outfit. Hey, fuck you, bro. And then, <laughs> and then, and these are some random ass tag teams. Like I always remember, like watching reruns of like old ass wrestling. And one of the guys I I remember the most was the Heavenly Bodies, which were uh, managed by Jim Cornette. <laughs> I feel like this is like the third time he's been name dropped recently. But uh, they had this wrestler named Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey, bro. And he was supposed to be like some prostitute looking guy. But he was ugly <laughs> as fuck. Like a redneck. <laughs> yeah, look at him up. <laughs> he 
was fucking gigolo Jimmy Del Rey, but he looked so fucking goofy, bro. <laughs> like, this guy's a gigolo? Nah. Hell nah. Uh, and the Steiner brothers. See, those are like my, when I think of a tag team, that's who I think of. Bro, you just gave us like a top six. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, Adrian, <laughs> on to you. Your top three tag teams of all time. I did grow up watching Lucha Libre style, mainly AAA and CMLL. So my favorite tag team of all time, the people that got me watching wrestling in the beginning, my number one of all, all, all fucking time. Nobody can say nothing wrong about these two. The real Octagon and La Parca, the second one. Not LA Park, La Parca, the goofy gimmicks, the antics, the dancing, the taunting, the acrobatics by Octagon on the rope. One of the first ones to pretty much do it. Um, right before, you know, some some people like Commander, Phoenix, Rey Mysterio, people who walked the, the top rope like it's nothing. Octagon was pretty much one of the first ones to ever do it. And most importantly, they were baby faces. They were cool. I fucking love them to death. My number two tag team of the world of all time is when I first started watching WWF. And the tag team division was pretty deep. And to be honest, the Hardy Boys were the only ones in that division that caught my attention. They wrestled. Um, they did some acrobatics, some high-flying moves, similar to Lucha Libre style. And I, I fucking loved it because there was nothing like that in WWE or WWF at the time. So I'm going to have to go with the Hardy Boys as number two. Number three is a newly tag team. These two individuals, these two brothers started their career separately as single stars. And when they transitioned into the United States, right after Lucha Underground, they became a tag team. And that's another other than the Lucha Bros. The Lucha Bros in my eyes currently right now they are probably the best tag team ever. Why? Because they can also compete as singles competitors. Like who else can do that? I know we have and I, and I know in our show we like to talk about tag teams who are just created by random individuals. You know you have people like MJF and um, Adam Cole. You have Miz and all of his 30th lackeys. <laughs> uh, Rock and Sock Connection. Rock and Austin. The little one timers. But the Lucha Bros to me are still the greatest tag team currently right now even though there are some tag team champions out there lucha bros some of my best tag teams uh lucha bros is my number three top tag team but honorable mention and people might cook me on this i'll put number four as too cool scotty too hottie and grandmaster sexy bro love them wow is it the dance moves how'd you know <laughs> Damn, I'm fucking dead. So in order to impress Adrian, you just have to dance. So you just have to do another MJF and Adam Cole segment. Did I just get exposed, Damn. bro? <laughs> you got exposed as fuck. <laughs> okay, let's first thing here. I did it. I did it. It's my first one. Oh my god. That's so funny. Fuck, Adrian, bro. You so got I guess I gotta like MJF and Adam Cole now, bro, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing all right so caitlin since this is the first time that you're on trigger wrestling i'm gonna let you close out the show the way you want to because i know you've seen us do it for 40 something episodes so you go ahead and do it all right well thank you guys for having me on here i was wrong earlier this is our 48th episode so we are coming on to 50 maybe we'll do a special episode for the 50th episode of Triggered Wrestling. Follow us at Trig underscore wrestling on TikTok and Twitter. Triggered Wrestling on literally anything else. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, and uh, what the hell is that called? Apple. Apple Podcasts. That thing. Oh, and uh, also make sure that you visit our website, TriggeredWrestling.com. Uh, we've got a calendar up. It's going to be showing our upcoming events so that you are always staying tuned in to all of our meetings and greets all of our events that we're going to be there so that you can get interviewed by us whether you're a fan whether you're a wrestler whether you're a regular schmegular person on the street we want to talk to you and get your opinion on what triggers you about wrestling y'all have a wonderful night this is triggered wrestling and most importantly stay triggered